Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. So today we're here to do my third project using the milk and cookies paper. This is for the design team projects over on the scrap or the scrapbook page, the Facebook page, um, Country Craft Creations. Um, so you guys will see this on the Country Craft Creation page as well as my page, which is Coffee, Cake, and Crafting. If there weren't enough C's to confuse you, well, there's six more. <laughs> So anyway, so this project, I want to make it all about the matting and the ephemera. Because if you're like me, you buy these ephemera packs because they're so cute, but you never know what to do with them. You use one or two pieces. You spent, I think they're like five bucks. I don't, I really don't know how much they are because I usually just get the whole collection. But you spend like five bucks or so on it and you just hoard it. You don't know what to do. So I am stepping out of my comfort zone and we are going to make this all about the matting, all about the ephemera. Um, for those of you who follow me, you know that matting is not my strength. Um, constructing the mini albums and making them up, I can do that all day long, but when it comes to matting, I'm a little bit slow. So I've been watching the other design team members on the Country Craft Creation. Um, I just kind of taking little tidbits from each of them. So we're gonna go ahead and this video is going to be the quick construction of the pages so just the basics um let me get this camera view a little bit different there we go so it's going to be the basics um and then the next video will just be all about the matting so that way um if you're a strong matter you can just watch this video and and then do your own thing um if you're not a strong matter hopefully what i do um will inspire you and I don't have that part planned out because I figure I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants um, I already started cutting everything um, so first what I like to do is pick what I want as my inside pages um, so I picked the tree page here that's gonna go on my front and back cover so when you open the book these will be the front and back cover so I'm just gonna set these aside and you also want to pick a page that's going to be your um, your outside cover. Now I did not do that because I have plenty of paper so I'm thinking mine is going to be this one maybe I don't know I don't know yet so if you don't have enough of the paper collection then you need to pick out your cover page first um, which is going to go on the outside of your book Okay, so for this book, you need a few simple things, um, and I'll have it typed out for you, but to make these pages, um, mine is six by nine. Um, it's going to be the size of my book, the pages anyway. Um, so what you need is five 12 by nine pages, and then just score it in half on the 12 inch side. So when you're done, you get your page like this. So it's 12 by 9 scored at 6. So you need five of those. These are going to be your base pages. I'm making mine pocket pages so I can put inserts in the top. Um, if you don't want pocket pages, you can seal the whole entire page and just have the page. Um, you're going to have plenty of room um, for pictures in this album. It's, it's a big album. So I've already constructed my hinge. Um, I did the, the hidden hinge binding system. Uh, Tammy has a video on it and I have a video as well. Um, if I remember, I'll link it. So basically my pages are just gonna fit on my hinge like this. Hence the hidden hinge, you can't see it. It's gonna be open on top, so it's gonna be a pocket. Um, so that's why I did it, okay? So there's that. Then you're going to need two pieces um, of cardstock three by nine so I just used the leftover from when I cut the pages this is the three inches that was left over when I cut it by nine um, so three by nine and I scored it a half an inch on the three inch side so that way it's going to be a little um, actually it's gonna go this way it's gonna be a flap and we're gonna build this up okay so you need two of those. Then you're going to need two 
pieces um, six by nine and on the six inch side you're going to score it at a half and you'll see these as we're going through the page but um, for me I like to get all my pieces cut first so you can do that um, if you want to that is actually mine are going to be my middle pieces somewhere in here I have everything laid out how I want it um, yeah I'm taking a risk by actually matting um, the base pages before I pull out my ephemera but I don't want to overthink it and I think that um, when we do that we, we overthink if you just pop it down it's it that's it it's down you have to figure it out and match it instead of trying to match the paper to the piece if that makes sense um, so these are the two um, six by nine scored at a half an inch. Oh, I didn't score that one very well. But it's six by nine, six by nine, scored at a half an inch on the six inch side. Okay, then I need um, two three by sevens. Those are going to be your pockets. Let me find a pocket. Here it is. So three by seven, and you're going to score it on three sides so your pocket is um, going to go this way so you need to score it on two short sides and one long side because we need our pocket. Why is this crooked? Sorry I don't my camera looks all type of wonky here. I don't know what's going on. Oh no it's annoying me. Okay that's even worse. All right, guys. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. But anyway, and then I can see the shadow. Okay, just do it. Just, just <laughs> bear with me. Okay, so this is your um, three by seven scored on three sides at a half an inch. The um, two short sides and only one long side. And I went ahead and mitered mine, which I usually wait until I put the score tape on there. But I guess I got too happy. Um, you also need, um, something you need two of the, okay. So you need four pieces. I'm sorry, four pieces at three by five. Okay. And then you're going to score it at a half on the five inch side. So these are going to be our flats that are going to go up and down. So you need four, four of those. Okay. And then you need um, your booklets. I'm going to put these little booklets in my pockets. You don't have to do this stuff if you don't want to, but I just really liked how this looked. So my booklets are, if I can read my own handwriting here, my books are, um, Eight, eight by four and a half scored at four and the other one is ten by four and a half scored at five so they're going to sit on top of each other like that I thought that was really cute you can do your booklets any size but that's the size I picked right now um, and then you need two pieces at four and a half. Oh my gosh, I wrote that really bad. Four and a half by four. Where's my pencil? Four and a half by four. So that is actually on my second page, I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, because I want this layout here. I want this to look like this on this page. Mm, I just figured that would give extra room for the ephemera. So two pieces at four and a half by four, and then two pieces at three by three. So you want that square. You want a rectangle and a square. Okay, so that's what I did. All my back pattern pieces are um, five and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. So it's basically the tick mark right before 
the six and the tick mark right before the nine. So that way I can have about an eighth of an inch border um, around. So when it's laying on top, it looks super nice like so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this. Um, again, this construction is just something I came up with. I thought it was super cute. There are going to be some, with these little split pages, I have two ideas in mind. So I'm just going to do the construction of it first. And then when I'm matting, if we need more cardstock, we need more cardstock. Uh, because I think I want to build it up um, with a big photo mat. But for right now, we are just going to do this. So all I did was put square tape on my half an inch score mark. And I'm going to... Move all this junk out of the way. Work on this. Um, I'm just going to lay it down on the right hand side. And I'm making sure, what I peeked inside is I'm making sure that um, my score tape is to the bottom because um, I need the top to be open. So I need to make sure all my pages are directional. You can seal your page now if you want, um, it just makes it a little bit harder to put it on your hinge. Um, some people think it's easier, but for me it's harder to do that, so I'm not gonna seal it, okay? But I am gonna go ahead and match this up. It should fit perfectly. Um, sounds like my husband's watching a scary movie, so if you hear people screaming, it's just the movie, I promise. All right, so now I just put that little flap there, and I'm gonna go ahead and match my um, paper using my art glitter glue which probably by the time this video goes out you can no longer get until the spring so hopefully you bought everything on Thanksgiving Day that's what today is for me um, what did I do I didn't unclog my I think I have a hole in my top. I need to just put the pin in like Tammy does. Oh, come on. Of course, because I'm on camera, so you know how that goes. Actually, I think I just left. I don't think I put the top back on, so it's like kind of dried up on the inside. There we go. Okay. So I'm just scribbling on the glitter glue. There is the metal tip for this. Oh, come on. Okay, you know what? I'm annoyed now. <laughs> I'm just going to use this other glue real fast. And then I will... I have never had the art glitter glue do that. So it's just user error. It's not the, it's not the art glitter glue. Okay, so I gotta make sure it's directional and go ahead and that. And again, I did pick out the order um, of these pages simply by I took the um, oh man, that's crooked. I took the sheets in the paper collection. I cut them in to size. Um, the five and seven eighths by the eight and seven eighths, and then I um, just flipped one over. So one side is one side of the paper, and the other is the other. With the exception of the Merry Christmas, I used the Merry Christmas side on the front and the candy cane, which is on the back, on the back page. Okay, if that makes sense. So that's my page one. My page two, I wanted. Um, this with the um, rectangle and the square but I don't think that I am going to glue down the the rectangle and the square yet because I may want to put some um, pieces behind it so what I'm going to do is just paper clip it so I remember what I was doing without having to um, come back to this video because I'm not gonna I'm probably you know I'm not gonna do the matting tonight because it's late and I do have to work tomorrow so and I really want to use 
basically all of the ephemera pack. Um, yeah. So this page here is not directional, so we can just put it down. Make sure that border is even. Okay, so I'm just going to get my paper clips, maybe. I don't know where they are. Oh, there they are. Okay. And they're just regular paper clips. And I'm just going to go ahead and clip um, the two that I want here. And then, wait. I'm just going to do the two that I want here and then I'll clip the two on the next page. Right? Okay, so see how it's just the, I'm just using the other side. Um, that's why I love using the same paper collection because somebody somewhere with a degree in this has a uh, made the match so you trust in your paper collection that everything in it's going to match whether you think so or not it does well probably scientifically anyway but whatever okay okay so let's just go ahead and get this page on there because we're not doing any flips or flaps on this one and you know what sometimes i don't want so many flips and flaps I enjoy a flip and a flap, but, um, you know, sometimes when you're giving it as a gift, people are like, okay, already I got it. You can flip and flap. So occasionally, very rarely, I like to do these type of pages. Okay. So this side is getting the two. Which ones? Okay, so now we're on to this side, and this side is going to be the gingerbread color, the craft color, and it has the gingerbread uh, man and the house and the tree and the candy canes and all that. So that's going to be this side, but first, no, this side was the pocket page. So we can go ahead and glue this down, and then this is going to be the pocket on top. So, I can glue this one down. This is why sometimes it is good to um, know where you're putting your pockets. Because, um, well, I guess if you map first, it doesn't matter because you're going to put your pockets on top anyway. But you may not want to use a whole piece of paper. Um, say, you measured wrong and you only have six inches of this paper or whatever. Um, it's always good to put a pocket because nobody knows that it doesn't go all the way down to the pocket. But I did cut these correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, glue it down. So the glue that I'm using, um, since I broke my art glitter glue somehow, I'm just using this Elmer's Craft Bond. I do like it for matting because it's kind of like the difference between um, AGT and score tape. Um, you know, score tape is the absolute best, so is the art glitter glue, but um, in a bind, uh, or when you're matting, you don't want to use your score tape, you're going to use your ATG or your tape runners. And so when I'm matting, sometimes I use my art glitter glue or I will use my um, craft bond. So I have my pocket here. And I'm wishing I would have cut it less than six inches. Because I want to show, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut off. quarter of an inch on each side and then I'm going to re-score it because I want my brown paper to show. So yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, that's how I want it. So my new measurement for the pocket, if you want to do the pocket like mine, um, is three by six and a half scored and half an inch on three sides. Okay, and that's just because I want my brown paper to show. Um, you may not want yours to show, but it's always best to, if you're gonna pre-cut your pages, it's always best to do the bigger size. And then like you just saw, you can just um, cut it down. So my pockets, you can use your art glitter glue. I'm gonna have to remiter this one. You can use your art glitter glue or you can use your um, score tape. They're both just as strong to me, the same strength. Um, it's just, I broke my glitter glue. So we gotta make sure these are really adhered. Right. So everyone does their pockets a little bit different. I didn't miter that one enough. When I say miter, I'm just trying to get as close to this crisscross pattern. I don't know if you can see it without hitting the end, without hitting the corner. I mean, I guess on a pocket, it doesn't really matter. So, so I did ask Santa for a desk lamp because my lighting is horrible in this room. I even took the, um, what do you call that? The glass thing off my light and I have like super bright LEDs in there, but, um, yeah, it's still not working. So I asked Santa for a new light. Hopefully I get it. If not, I'll buy it myself. <laughs> okay. So... There's my pocket, my little baby pocket. Um, I hope it, okay, good. So I'm probably gonna do a taller, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do a taller pocket book. So that way I have the, th maybe three, maybe I'll do two more so I have the layers, but we'll see about that tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my pockets in like that, so. This page goes this way. Okay. So next I have my um, the other side of that that this paper, which is the cakes. Fumble hands today. So see, that's the paper we just used. Now we're just using the other side. And I think I want my flaps to be underneath. So I want mine to look like what? What do we want? Do we want our flaps to go? Let's see. Or do I want it this way? I think I like that way, or you can even do your flaps like this if you want to, but I plan for mine to be up and down. Yeah, so I want mine that way. So I'm going to go ahead and score tape this, and I'm going to put it under the paper. You can put it on top of the paper if you want, um, and cover it with like a border piece. This collection does have some really cute border pieces that you'll see, or you can use like, you know, a half an inch. Oh, you can use the washi tape too. Um, a half an inch piece of paper, or you can use the washi. But I think, let me think this through. I think I want mine to go, yep, I want mine to go under the page, under the white. Yep, that's what I want. So you can do this one of two ways. You can attach it to the back of your pattern paper, or you can attach it to the red. I'm just gonna attach it to the red. Um, 
make sure there's no overhang. I'm just going to eyeball it. Wherever it goes, it goes. Right there seems about right. See, I'm not stressing over it. Don't overthink it, paper manipulators. Just, just do it. Okay, and then this one I just kind of want. So I left about a quarter of an inch where my pinky is. So I'm just going to leave about a quarter of an inch on the top. I need to flip it over, guys. Sorry. This is where you get in trouble when you start flipping it around because um, you don't forget to put it back in the direction that you had it. Then that's when you accidentally seal both ends of your paper, which is okay because then you just call it um, a page instead of a pocket page, right? Okay, I'm going to open up my flaps and I'm going to glue that on there, but I'm going to triple check that that's the correct way. It is. Okay. So you can, as you can see, this book is pretty quick. I wanted the construction to be fairly quick. Um... So that way you can focus your time on the matting and using, I want to, I know I'm not going to be able to use every single piece of the ephemera. Um, that's just going to be way too much for my taste. I think, um, you never know, I might say that. And then tomorrow I use every piece and then some, but I'm going to throw everything I have at this book. And I'm going to throw in some seam binding. I'm going to throw in the flat back pearls. We are just going to have a Mapapalooza, right? We are going to put the kitchen sink on this book. And we're going to love it. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you're back to being folded. And that page is done. So now we're on the back, which is going to be... This is going to be my full page layout because... It's going to look like um, we have to map both sides of this. Um, so I need this to come together like so. I'll show you in a second. I'm going to have the same milk and cookies facing each other in this layout because I want it to be one. Which side did I cut this on? I want it to be one big gigantic layout. I love gigantic layouts in the middle of the book. So it'll be closed like this. You'll see a little peep of that paper. And then when it opens, you will have a massive space. So that's what we're going for with this one. Um, is it going to work out? Absolutely. You know why? Because we are just going to make it work. So, I think I just taped this the wrong way. But guess what? Nobody will know. So, I'm just going to tape this on top of the book here. Again, I need to turn it. You can go all the way to the edge. I'm going to choose to go all the way to the edge. Um, you don't have to, but I am. You guys probably didn't see that. Sorry. I just put it all the way to the edge. Okay. Um, I'll probably do some corner rounding. Um, on here. I don't know yet. So I'm just going to leave it as is for right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and glue this mat down. And I have not pre-cut the paper for those two flaps. Um, honestly, I just forgot. So, you know, usually when I'm matting, I stress and stress and stress over what pages are going to go together. Um, how's it going to look? You know, where do I start? This time, you know what? I just cut the paper. Once you make that first cut, you become a little bit more confident you get a little bit more anxiety but confident anxiety that makes sense 
Okay. So I need to push this over a little bit. Make sure I cover that nicely. Okay. So that is that page with my black. Okay. I needed to make sure I'm not varnishing, which is horrible. Because that's what keeps your book flat and you don't have as much Pac Man mouth. So next page is going to look the same, but your flap is just going to go to the right instead of to the left. So let me go ahead and score tape this side. Okay. Make sure that's secured really well. Peel off the tape and adhere it to the right side. And again, I'm going all the way to the edge. Actually, I think it's like 1 16th of an inch from the edge. Um, just how I redo it. Okay, get that varnish on the inside. Okay, make sure. Directionally, I'm still good. I'm still good. And directionally, we're good here too. Okay. So there's one thing that you uh, learn from scrapbooking is uh, direction, direction, direction. Because, um, yeah, we always put it the wrong direction when it's your last piece of paper. Um, and you have nothing else to go there, and then you gotta like pray to the paper gods that you can pull it off. And I know some people use undo and they heat it and blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, I don't have time for that. So um, I just prefer to triple check. And um, if that paper is upside down, then you're just like, oh my god, that's so funny! I can't believe I did that. Yeah, I've done that a time or two. Or you just cover it up with something else. Okay. So there's my full page layout. It's going to be like that. So I don't know what I'm going to put there, but it's going to be something, obviously. Okay, so let me bar it down. Okay. Next is going to be this cute little holly paper. And then this is what I was talking about with the border papers. So they have super cute borders, like that's a half an inch, that's a half an inch, uh, three fourths of an inch, that's a half an inch there. So you can use a paper collection um, to cover up those flaps if you want. But um, I'm not. I'm putting them under. So I have my pocket again, and I just need to change the size of my pocket. I'm just repeating. Um, so what I'm doing is cutting off a quarter of an inch and then rescoring because I want my pocket to be smaller than um, the pattern paper. Okay, so let me just re-lighter. And re I'm just, again, just sorry I keep going off, off camera, but I changed the position of my camera so I'm not hitting it every single time, but I don't know if I like it. And I could probably zoom in a little bit more, but um, I think we'll see how this goes. And then if you guys let me know if the angle was wonky or, you know, just let me know. I'm not really doing anything too complicated with this book. We want, um, I don't want to say simple because, you know, what's simple for me is hard for somebody else, and what's hard for somebody else may be simple for me. So, 
I want to say simple. I don't know what word I want to use though. We we went less intense. How about that? <sighs> okay. So I'm just gonna take off the pieces of my score tape. And yeah, I'm a brave crafter. Um when I don't think about it and I just lay it down, it's fine. But when I start overthinking pockets and whatnot. That's when it goes crazy. If you are not a brave soul, by all means, use your um, glue stick. I'll show you that in a second. Here's the funny thing about me. So I'm using the other side of this, but because I know this is directional, even though it's you, you're not going to see it on this page, I have to make this directional. I don't know why I do that, but I do. Like I couldn't put this like this because I know on the back it's upside down. One of those weird things, probably from me putting the papers on upside down. Now I can't do anything upside down. Okay. Ah, this is why you don't want to take your pocket things off too soon your square tape stuff off. That's the thing I like about the linen paper is that if you don't varnish the score tape down, usually you can pick it back up. Okay, so let's make sure we're directional. We are, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna pop my pocket in there. So, oh, I was gonna show you that technique. So just a regular glue stick, um, you know, these ones that we, by our kids, or you probably still have, like me, I, this is probably from like sixth grade. My mom bought like a thousand of them, something ridiculous. And my son has gone through them, my nephews have gone through them, and now they're, my son and my nephews are 14, 15, no, I'm sorry, 15, 16, and 17 years old, and we still have <laughs> nine million blisters. And she went to like cost, or like Sam's Club or Costco or something like that, and it was buy a thousand for a penny probably something crazy <laughs> okay maybe not like that but yeah I get it so all I did was just rub the glue stick on the score tape that just gives you a little bit of wiggle room it makes that score tape a little bit pliable but when that um, glue stick dries you will still have your strength of your score tape um, so it just gives you that extra room to move your pocket about. Okay, so there's that. And then here are my two books that I haven't matted. I'm going to put those there. So it goes that way. And then now we're on to this page here. Almost done, guys. This is going to be one of my shorter videos. That's probably an hour. <laughs> so we're just doing our, our um, flaps again. So, I'm just going to score tape there. And the reason why I'm cutting my score tape is because um, I want the full adhesion from, adhesion, oh my gosh, I want the full adhesive from end to end. And sometimes when I tear it, I don't get that full coverage. So, that's why I'm doing that. Again, we're just using the back side of that poly paper, which is the border paper. I think it's going to be super cute. I have an idea for it. Um, we'll see. Okay, so the other one, how do we do our flaps? We flap them top, bottom. So maybe I want to flap this one differently. Hmm, let's find out. So I'm just going to go here. And here, let's see, or do I want to go back to here and here? Because now you can see treats for Santa, here comes Santa Claus. I think I'm just going to go this way again because of what you can see on this page. And then when you flip it, you'll see the whole thing. Or do I want to go here and 
here. Or you could even do something like this if you wanted to. Um, I think I'm just going to stick with mine here and here. I like that. That's what I'm going to go with. You can configure your flaps however you want. You can make them bigger if you want to. You can make them smaller. Just however you want. It's your book. Or if you get the direction wrong, then they're going to be different than, <laughs> than that. So. There we go. And just make sure these flaps are down. You can tuck them under the page if you want. Um, I find that if I tuck it under the page, um, sometimes it doesn't fold over nicely. Um, it does produce less bulk, but I'm okay with it. I mean, there's not, where's the page at? There's not too much bulk that you're noticing here, so I'm okay with it. It's it's your preference. We didn't seal the pages, or at least I didn't, so you could have taken that flap and tucked it under here and had it fold over, like you tuck it under here and had it fold over. I just feel that that gives you more bulk on your hinge, um, so that's that. I mean, honestly, I think I do it both ways. I don't know. I might. All right, so my flaps are down. And so this glue, you have to use way more than the art glitter glue. Um, I mean, it is cheap, but I mean, as you can see, I'm like coating this thing to keep it down. Art glitter glue, you just gotta put. Uh, a little tiny scribble of glue. So, yeah. Because I think I, I've only used probably eight ounces in a little less than a year. So, I mean, you get your money's worth. When I say a little scribble, you just need a little scribble. I probably use way too much online because I don't use the metal tip, which is funny because when I was at the retreat, I was all about that metal tip. But when I got home, I didn't like it anymore, so I don't use it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to put the candy canes because, remember, we use the Merry Christmas on the front and I'm going to do the candy canes on the back and this is having the flap on it as well and I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same and flap it to the right um, let's see do I want to flap it to the right yeah I'm going to flap it to the right okay so this is what I was talking about if you wanted to put this on the inside so you'd put the score tape on the inside here and then pick up your page and flap it like so um but i put my score tape on the back side like say this is folded i'm gonna put mine there and then stick it to the front of the page if that makes sense i don't know if you guys are able to see that or not okay And actually, I think that if you do it under your mat, then you get that extra security of your mat is holding that flop in place. I don't know. Again, it honestly doesn't matter which side you do it on. Okay. So I want this right up to the edge. And 
like an overhang. You want to make sure you fold that overhang down or else you're going to see it in your book and it's just going to look like um, like leftover glue and it looks gross. Okay. Make sure that's down. And then, oh, oh. Okay. So I just scared myself. I thought I did that flat wrong, but I didn't. Because this is the back page. I think I did do that flat wrong. No, maybe not. Are all the pages open to the back? Yeah. Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, sure. It wouldn't have mattered because if I would have put the flap one wrong, then we just would have had a left flap instead of a right flap. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put this paper on here. And again, I'm putting 20 pounds of this cheap glue on. Okay. Mm. Okay. And give it that border. And that's the thing, like the art glitter glue, when you put it near the edge, it um, floods to the edges. This glue does not, so I may have to add more glue. I feel like I should. I just feel like that was not enough glue in that one spot. So I just overflowed it. Okay. So our pages are constructed. They are done. Um, so now when we open our book, you're going to have your cover. You're going to have this page and your flap that we're going to do something fun with. You're going to have your two traditional layouts, um, little interaction. You're going to have your pocket with your books and then your flaps are going to come open and then you're going to have your full layout and then your pocket again with your flaps and here is the back with your half page. Okay, guys. So that's it for the construction. Uh, I think I am going to leave my pages off the hinge. Um, I, I honestly don't know which way is going to be easier. Um, so I'm going to leave it off the hinges for right now. And um, hopefully that's easier for me. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.